Nakavan Autonomous Republic, Wikipedia article audio. The Nakavan Autonomous Republic is a landlocked exclave of the Republic of Azerbaijan. The region covers 5,500 km2 with a population of 410,000, bordering Armenia to the east and north, Iran to the south and west, and Turkey to the northwest. Etymology History Early History Iranian Rule Passing to Imperial Russian Rule War and Revolution Sovietization Nakhavan in the Soviet Union Nakhavan in the post-Soviet era Administrative Subdivisions Demographics Geography Economy Industry International Issues Status of Armenian Cultural Monuments Recognition of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus Culture Archaeology People from Nakhavan Political leaders Religious leaders Military leaders Writers and poets Scientists Others The area that is now Nakhavan became part of the Seyfavid dynasty of Iran in the 16th century. In 1828, after the last Russo-Persian War and the Treaty of Turkmenche, the Nakhavan Khanate passed from Iranian into Imperial Russian possession. After the 1917 February Revolution, Nakhavan and its surrounding region were under the authority of the Special Transcaucasian Committee of the Russian Provisional Government and subsequently of the short-lived Transcaucasian Democratic Federative Republic. When the TDFR was dissolved in May 1918, Nakhavan, Nagorno-Karabakh, Zanjir, and Kazakh were heavily contested between the newly formed and short-lived states of the Democratic Republic of Armenia and the Azerbaijan Democratic Republic. In June 1918, the region came under Ottoman occupation. Under the terms of the Armistice of Mudros, the Ottomans agreed to pull their troops out of the Transcaucasus to make way for British occupation at the close of the First World War. In July 1920, the Bolsheviks occupied the region and on July 28, declared the Nakhavan Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic with close ties to the Azerbaijan SSR, beginning 70 years of Soviet rule. In January 1990 Nakhavan declared independence from the USSR to protest against the suppression of the national movement in Azerbaijan, and became the Nakhavan Autonomous Republic within the newly independent Republic of Azerbaijan a year later. Photographs of Nakhavan The Nakhavan Autonomous Republic is an autonomous area of Azerbaijan, governed by its own elected legislature. The region continues to suffer from the effects of the Armenia-Azerbaijan War, and its Kharki exclave has been under Armenian occupation ever since. The administrative capital city is Nakhavan. Vazif Talabov has been the leader since 1995. Sources Variations of the name Nakhavan include Nakakevan, Naksivan, Naksivan, Nakachwan, Nakhijivan, Nakkawan, Nakichavan, Nakjavan, and Nakjavan. Nakhavan is mentioned in Ptolemy's geography and by other classical writers as Nakshuana. The 19th century language scholar Johann Heinrich Hubschmann wrote that the name Nakakavan in Armenian literally means the place of descent a biblical reference to the descent of Noah's Ark on the adjacent Mount Ararat. Armenian tradition says that Nakhavan was founded by Noah. 
First century Jewish historian Flavius Josephus also wrote about Nikakevin, saying that its original name Alpha Pi Omicron Beta Alpha Tau Atero Iota Omicron Nu, or Place of Descent, is the proper rendering of the Armenian name of this very city. Hubschman noted, however, that it was not known by that name in antiquity, and that the present day name evolved to Nakkavan from Nagzawan. The prefix Naks derives from Naxi or Nagzua and Awan is Armenian for place, town. The oldest material culture artifacts found in the region date back to the Neolithic age. On the other hand, Azerbaijani archaeologists have found that the history of Nakkavan dates back to the Stone Age. As a result of archaeological diggings, Archaeologists discovered a great number of materials, which belong to the Stone Age, in different corners of Nakkavan, particularly in Gizma Cave. Additionally, these materials were useful to study the Paleolithic Age in Azerbaijan. The region was part of the state of Urito and later of Media. It became part of the satrapy of Armenia under Achaemenid Persia c. 521 BC. After Alexander the Great's death in 323 BC, various Macedonian generals such as Neoptolemus tried to take control of the region, but ultimately failed and a native Armenian dynasty of Orontids flourished until Armenia was conquered by Antiochus III the Great. In 189 BC, Nakkavan became part of the new kingdom of Armenia established by Artis Yazai. Within the kingdom, the region of present-day Nakkavan was part of the Ararat, Vasparakan, and Siyunik provinces. According to the early medieval Armenian historian Mufsas Korinitsi, from the 3rd to 2nd centuries, the region belonged to the Muritsian Nakarar family but after disputes with central power, King Artavesdi massacred the family and seized the lands and formally attached it to the kingdom. The area's status as a major trade center allowed it to prosper, as a result, many foreign powers coveted it. According to the Armenian historian Faustus of Byzantium, when the Sassanid Persians invaded Armenia, Sassanid King Shapur II removed 2,000 Armenian and 16,000 Jewish families in 360 to 370. In 428, the Armenian Arshakuni monarchy was abolished and Nakkavan was annexed by Sassanid Persia. In 623, possession of the region passed to the Byzantine Empire but was soon left to its own rule. Sebios referred to the area as Tachkastan. Nakkavan is said by his pupil, Koryun Vardapit, to be the place where the Armenian scholar and theologian Mesrab Mashtots finished the creation of the Armenian alphabet and opened the first Armenian schools. It happened in the province of Gokhtan, which corresponds to Nakkavan's modern Ordubad district. From 640 on, the Arabs invaded Nakkavan and undertook many campaigns in the area, crushing all resistance and attacking Armenian nobles who remained in contact with the Byzantines or who refused to pay tribute. In 705, after suppressing an Armenian revolt, Arab Viceroy Muhammad ibn Marwan decided to eliminate the Armenian nobility. In Nakkavan, Several hundred Armenian nobles were locked up in churches and burnt, while others were crucified. The violence caused many Armenian princes to flee to the neighboring kingdom of Georgia or the Byzantine Empire. Meanwhile, Nakkavan itself became part of the autonomous principality of Armenia under Arab control. In the 8th century, Nakkavan was one of the scenes of an uprising against the Arabs led by Persian revolutionary Bobak Kiaramdan of the Iranian Khorram Din. Nakkavan was finally released from Arab rule in the 10th century by Bagratuni king Sambadai and handed over to the princes of Siyunik. 
This region also was taken by Sajids in 895 and between 909 and 929, Salarid between 942 and 971 and Shadadid between 971 and 1045. About 1055, the Seljuk Turks took over the region. In the 12th century, the city of Nakhkavan became the capital of the state of Atabegs of Azerbaijan, also known as Ildijizid state, which included most of Iranian Azerbaijan and a significant part of the South Caucasus. The magnificent 12th century mausoleum of Mamun Katun, the wife of Ildijizid ruler, Great Atabeg Jahan Pelevan, is the main attraction of modern Nakhkavan. At its heyday, the Ildijizid authority in Nakhkavan and some other areas of South Caucasus was contested by Georgia. The Armeno-Georgian princely house of Zak Arids frequently raided the region when the Atabeg state was in decline in the early years of the 13th century. It was then plundered by invading Mongols in 1220 and Khwarezmians in 1225 and became part of Mongol Empire in 1236 when the Caucasus was invaded by Kermakan. In the 13th century during the reign of the Mongol horde ruler Gayuk Khan Christians were allowed to build churches in the strongly Muslim town of Nakhkavan. However the conversion to Islam of Ghazan Khan brought about a reversal of this favor. The 14th century saw the rise of Armenian Catholicism in Nakhkavan, though by the 15th century the territory became part of the states of Karakoyunlu and A.K. Koyunlu. In the 16th century, control of Nakhkavan passed to the Safavid dynasty. Until the demise of the Safavids, it remained as an administrative jurisdiction of the Edivan province. Because of its geographic position, it frequently suffered during the wars between the Safavids and the Ottoman Empire, from the 16th to 18th centuries. Turkish historian Brahim Pasevi described the passing of the Ottoman army from the Ararat plain to Nakhkavan. On the 27th day they reached the plain of Nakhkavan. Out of fear of the victorious army, the people deserted the cities, villages, houses, and places of dwelling, which were so desolate that they were occupied by owls and crows and struck the onlooker with terror. Moreover, they ruined and laid waste all of the villages, towns, fields, and buildings along the road over a distance of four or five days' march so that there was no sign of any buildings or life. In 1604, Shah Abbas I of Iran, concerned that the skilled peoples of Nakhkhevan, its natural resources, and the surrounding areas could get in danger due to its relatively close proximity to the Ottoman Persian front line, decided to institute a scorched earth policy. He forced the entire hundreds of thousands of local population Muslims, Jews, and Armenians alike to leave their homes and move to the provinces south of the Aras River. Many of the deportees were settled in the neighborhood of Isfahan that was named New Julfa since most of the residents were from the original Julfa. The Turkic Kong early tribe was later permitted to move back under Shah Abbas II in order to repopulate the frontier region of his realm. In the 17th century, Nakhkavan was the scene of a peasant movement led by Krolu against foreign invaders and native exploiters. In 1747, the Nakhkavan Khanate emerged in the region after the death of Nader Shah Afshar. After the last Russo-Persian War and the Treaty of Turkmenche, the Nakhkavan Khanate passed into Russian possession in 1828 due to Iran's forced seating as a result of the outcome of the war and treaty. With the onset of Russian rule, the Tsarist authorities encouraged resettlement of Armenians to Nakhkavan and other areas of the Caucasus from the Persian and Ottoman empires. 
special clauses of the Turkmenche and Adrianople treaties allowed for this. Alexander Griboydov, the Russian envoy to Persia, stated that by the time Nakhavan came under Russian rule, there had been 290 native Armenians' families in the province excluding the city of Nakhavan, the number of Muslim families was 1,632, and the number of the Armenian immigrant families was 943. The same numbers in the city of Nakhavan were 114, 392 and 285 respectively. With such a dramatic influx of Armenian immigrants, Griboydov noted friction arising between the Armenian and Muslim populations. He requested Russian Army Commander Count Ivan Paskovic to give orders on resettlement of some of the arriving people further to the region of Derileas to quiet the tensions. The Nakhavan Khanate was dissolved in 1828 the same year it came into Russian possession, and its territory was merged with the territory of the Edivan Khanate and the area became the Nakhavan Uyezd of the new Armenian Oblast, which later became the Edivan Governorate in 1849. According to official statistics of the Russian Empire, by the turn of the 20th century Azerbaijanis made up 57% of the Uyezd's population, while Armenians constituted 42%. At the same time in the Sharur Derelage Yaz Uyezd, the territory of which would form the northern part of modern-day Nakhavan, Azeris constituted 70.5% of the population, while Armenians made up 27.5%. During the Russian Revolution of 1905, Conflict erupted between the Armenians and the Azeris, culminating in the Armenian Tatar massacres which saw violence in Nakhavan in May of that year. In the final year of World War I, Nakhavan was the scene of more bloodshed between Armenians and Azerbaijanis, who both laid claim to the area. By 1914, the Armenian population had decreased slightly to 40% while the Azeri population increased to roughly 60%. After the February Revolution, the region was under the authority of the Special Transcaucasian Committee of the Russian Provisional Government and subsequently of the short-lived Transcaucasian Democratic Federative Republic. When the TDFR was dissolved in May 1918, Nakhavan, Nagorno-Karabakh, Zanjir, and Kazakh were heavily contested between the newly formed and short-lived states of the Democratic Republic of Armenia and the Azerbaijan Democratic Republic. In June 1918, the region came under Ottoman occupation. The Ottomans proceeded to massacre 10,000 Armenians and razed 45 of their villages. Under the terms of the Armistice of Mudros, the Ottomans agreed to pull their troops out of the Transcaucasus to make way for the forthcoming British military presence. Under British occupation, Sir Oliver Wardrop, British Chief Commissioner in the South Caucasus, made a border proposal to solve the conflict. According to Wardrop, Armenian claims against Azerbaijan should not go beyond the administrative borders of the former Erivan Governorate, while Azerbaijan was to be limited to the governorates of Baku and Elizabethpol. This proposal was rejected by both Armenians and Azeris. As disputes between both countries continued, it soon became apparent that the fragile peace under British occupation would not last. In December 1918, with the support of Azerbaijan's Musavat party, Jafar Gulokan Nakhavansky declared the Republic of Aras in the Nakhavan Uyezd of the former Erivan Governorate assigned to Armenia by Wardrop. The Armenian government did not recognize the new state and sent its troops into the region to take control of it. The conflict soon erupted into the violent Aras War. 
British journalist C. E. Beckhofer Roberts described the situation in April 1920. You cannot persuade a party of frenzied nationalists that two blacks do not make a white, consequently, no day went by without a catalogue of complaints from both sides, Armenians and Tartars, of unprovoked attacks, murders, village burnings, and the like. Specifically, the situation was a series of vicious cycles. By mid June 1919, however, Armenia succeeded in establishing control over Nakhavan and the whole territory of the self proclaimed Republic. The fall of the Aras Republic triggered an invasion by the regular Azerbaijani army, and by the end of July, Armenian troops were forced to leave Nakhavan city to the Azeris. Again, more violence erupted leaving some 10,000 Armenians dead and 45 Armenian villages destroyed. Meanwhile, feeling the situation to be hopeless and unable to maintain any control over the area, the British decided to withdraw from the region in mid-1919. Still, Fighting between Armenians and Azeris continued and after a series of skirmishes that took place throughout the Nakhavan district, a ceasefire agreement was concluded. However, the ceasefire lasted only briefly, and by early March 1920, more fighting broke out, primarily in Karabakh between Karabakh Armenians and Azerbaijan's regular army. This triggered conflicts in other areas with mixed populations, including Nakhavan. In July 1920, the 11th Soviet Red Army invaded and occupied the region and on July 28, declared the Nakhavan Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic with close ties to the Azerbaijan SSR. In November, on the verge of taking over Armenia, the Bolsheviks, in order to attract public support, promised they would allot Nakhavan to Armenia, along with Karabakh and Zanjir. This was fulfilled when Nariman Narimanov, leader of Bolshevik Azerbaijan issued a declaration celebrating the victory of Soviet power in Armenia, proclaimed that both Nakhavan and Zanjir should be awarded to the Armenian people as a sign of the Azerbaijani people's support for Armenia's fight against the former DRA government. As of today, the old frontiers between Armenia and Azerbaijan are declared to be non-existent. Mountainous Karabakh, Zanjir, and Nakhavan are recognized to be integral parts of the Socialist Republic of Armenia. Vladimir Lenin, although welcoming this act of great Soviet fraternity where boundaries had no meaning among the family of Soviet peoples, did not agree with the motion and instead called for the people of Nakhavan to be consulted in a referendum. According to the formal figures of this referendum, held at the beginning of 1921, 90% of Nakhavan's population wanted to be included in the Azerbaijan SSR with the rights of an autonomous republic. The decision to make Nakhavan a part of modern-day Azerbaijan was cemented on March 16, 1921 in the Treaty of Moscow between Soviet Russia and the newly founded Republic of Turkey. The agreement between Soviet Russia and Turkey also called for attachment of the former Sharur Derelijazulyez to Nakhavan, thus allowing Turkey to share a border with the Azerbaijan SSR. This deal was reaffirmed on October 13, in the Treaty of Kars. Article V of the treaty stated the following. The Turkish government and the Soviet governments of Armenia and Azerbaijan are agreed that the region of Nakhavan, within the limits specified by Annex III to the present treaty, constitutes an autonomous territory under the protection of Azerbaijan. So, on February 9, 1924, the Soviet Union officially established the Nakhavan ASSR. Its constitution was adopted on April 18, 1926. 
As a constituent part of the Soviet Union, tensions lessened over the ethnic composition of Nakhchivan or any territorial claims regarding it. Instead, it became an important point of industrial production with particular emphasis on the mining of minerals such as salt. Under Soviet rule, it was once a major junction on the Moscow, Tehran railway line as well as the Baku, Yerevan railway. It also served as an important strategic area during the Cold War, sharing borders with both Turkey and Iran. Facilities improved during Soviet times. Education and public health especially began to see some major changes. In 1913, Nakhchivan only had two hospitals with a total of 20 beds. The region was plagued by widespread diseases including trachoma and typhus. Malaria, which mostly came from the adjoining Aras River, brought serious harm to the region. At any one time, between 70% and 85% of Nakhchivan's population was infected with malaria, and in the region of Norishen almost 100% were struck with the disease. This situation improved dramatically under Soviet rule. Malaria was sharply reduced and trachoma, typhus, and relapsing fever were completely eliminated. During the Soviet era, Nakhchivan saw a significant demographic shift. Its Armenian population gradually decreased as many emigrated to the Armenian SSR. In 1926, 15% of region's population was Armenian, but by 1979, this number had shrunk to 1.4%. The Azeri population, meanwhile, increased substantially with both a higher birth rate and immigration from Armenia. Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh noted similar though slower demographic trends and feared an eventual de-Armenianization of the area. When tensions between Armenians and Azeris were reignited in the late 1980s by the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, Azerbaijan's Popular Front managed to pressure the Azerbaijan SSR to instigate a partial railway and air blockade against Armenia, while another reason for disruption of rail service to Armenia were attacks of Armenian forces on the trains entering the Armenian territory from Azerbaijan, which resulted in railroad personnel refusing to enter Armenia. This effectively crippled Armenia's economy as 85% of the cargo and goods arrived through rail traffic. In response, Armenia closed the railway to Nakhchivan, thereby strangling the exclaves only linked to the rest of the Soviet Union. December 1989 saw unrest in Nakhchivan as its Azeri inhabitants moved to physically dismantle the Soviet border with Iran to flee the area and meet their ethnic Azeri cousins in northern Iran. This action was angrily denounced by the Soviet leadership and the Soviet media accused the Azeris of embracing Islamic fundamentalism. In January 1990, the Supreme Soviet of the Nakhchivan ASSR issued a declaration stating the intention for Nakhchivan to secede from the USSR to protest the Soviet Union's actions during Black January. It was the first part of the Soviet Union to declare independence, preceding Lithuania's declaration by only a few weeks. Haydar Aliyev, the future president of Azerbaijan, returned to his birthplace of Nakhchivan in 1990, after being ousted from his position in the Politburo by Mikhail Gorbachev in 1987. Soon after returning to Nakhchivan, Aliyev was elected to the Supreme Soviet by an overwhelming majority. Aliyev subsequently resigned from the CPSU and after the failed August 1991 coup against Gorbachev, he called for complete independence for Azerbaijan and denounced Ayaz Mutalibov for supporting the coup. In late 1991, 
Aliyev consolidated his power base as chairman of the Nakhkavan Supreme Soviet and asserted Nakhkavan's near total independence from Baku. Nakhkavan became a scene of conflict during the Nagorno-Karabakh War. On May 4, 1992, Armenian forces shelled the rayon of Sadarak. The Armenians claimed that the attack was in response to cross-border shelling of Armenian villages by Azeri forces from Nakhkavan. David Psadoyan, a 42-year-old Armenian physicist and mayor of the region, said that the Armenians lost patience after months of firing by the Azeris. If they were sitting on our hilltops and harassing us with gunfire, what do you think our response should be? He asked. The government of Nakhkavan denied these charges and instead asserted that the Armenian assault was unprovoked and specifically targeted the site of a bridge between Turkey and Nakhkavan. The Armenians do not react to diplomatic pressure, Nakhkavan Foreign Minister Reza Ibadov told the Etartas news agency, it's vital to speak to them in a language they understand. Speaking to the agency from the Turkish capital Ankara, Ibadov said that Armenia's aim in the region was to seize control of Nakhkavan. According to Human Rights Watch, hostilities broke out after three people were killed when Armenian forces began shelling the region. The heaviest fighting took place on May 18, when the Armenians captured Nakhkavan's exclave of Kharki a tiny territory through which Armenia's main north-south highway passes. The exclave presently remains under Armenian control. After the fall of Shusha, the Mutalibov government of Azerbaijan accused Armenia of moving to take the whole of Nakhkavan. However, Haydar Aliyev declared a unilateral ceasefire on May 23 and sought to conclude a separate peace with Armenia. Armenian President Levantur Petrosin expressed his willingness to sign a cooperation treaty with Nakhkavan to end the fighting and subsequently a ceasefire was agreed upon. The conflict in the area caused a harsh reaction from Turkey. Turkish Prime Minister Tansu Siller announced that any Armenian advance on the main territory of Nakhkavan would result in a declaration of war against Armenia. Russian military leaders declared that third-party intervention into the dispute could trigger a third world war. Thousands of Turkish troops were sent to the border between Turkey and Armenia in early September. Russian military forces in Armenia countered their movements by increasing troop levels along the Armenian-Turkish frontier and bolstering defenses in a tense period where war between the two seemed inevitable. The tension reached its peak, when Turkish heavy artillery shelled Nakhkavan side of Nakhkavan Armenian border, from the Turkish border for two hours. Iran also reacted to Armenia's attacks by conducting military maneuvers along its border with Nakhkavan in a move widely interpreted as a warning to Armenia. However, Armenia did not launch any further attacks on Nakhkavan and the presence of Russia's military warded off any possibility that Turkey might play a military role in the conflict. After a period of political instability, the parliament of Azerbaijan turned to Haydar Aliyev and invited him to return from exile in Nakhkavan to lead the country in 1993. Today, Nakhkavan retains its autonomy as the Nakhkavan Autonomous Republic and is internationally recognized as a constituent part of Azerbaijan governed by its own elected legislative assembly. A new constitution for Nakhkavan was approved in a referendum on November 12, 1995. The constitution was adopted by the Republic's assembly on April 28. 1998 and has been in force since January 8, 1999. However, the republic remains isolated, not only from the rest of Azerbaijan, but practically from the entire South Caucasus region. Vazif Talibov, who is related by marriage to Azerbaijan's ruling family, the Aliyevs, 
serves as the current parliamentary chairman of the Republic. He is known for his authoritarian and largely corrupt rule of the region. Most residents prefer to watch Turkish television as opposed to Nakhavan television, which one Azerbaijani journalist criticized as a propaganda vehicle for Talibov and the Aliyevs. Economic hardships and energy shortages plague the area. There have been many cases of migrant workers seeking jobs in neighboring Turkey. Emigration rates to Turkey, one analyst said, are so high that most of the residents of the Besseler district in Istanbul are Nakhavanis. When speaking to British writer Thomas Duval, the mayor of Nakhavan city, Vili Shukverdi Eve, spoke warmly of a peaceful solution to the Karabakh conflict and of Armenian-Azeri relations during Soviet times. I can tell you that our relations with the Armenians were very close, they were excellent, he said. I went to university in Moscow and I didn't travel to Moscow once via Baku. I took a bus, it was one hour to Yerevan, then went by plane to Moscow and the same thing on the way back. Recently Nakhavan made deals to obtain more gas exports from Iran, and a new bridge on the Aras River between the two countries was inaugurated in October 2007, the Azerbaijani president, Ilham Aliyev, and the first vice president of Iran, Pervis Davudi also attended the opening ceremony. In 2008, the National Bank of Azerbaijan minted a pair of gold and silver commemorative coins for the 85th anniversary of the creation of the Nikakevan Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic. Nakhavan is subdivided into eight administrative divisions. Seven of these are rayons. The capital city of Nakhavan city is treated separately. As of June 30, 2014, Nakhavan's population was estimated to be 435,400. Most of the population are Azerbaijanis, who constituted 99% of the population in 1999, while ethnic Russians and a minority of Kurds constituted the remainder of the population. The decades of the 1990s and 2000s saw a large outflow of the Azerbaijani population into Turkey and Azerbaijan proper, due to the economic hardship of the post-Soviet era as well as Nikakevan's geographical separation from the rest of Azerbaijan. The Kurds of Nakhavan are mainly found in the districts of Sadarak and Tivas. The remaining Armenians were expelled by Azerbaijani forces during the conflict over Nagorno-Karabakh as part of the forceful exchange of population between Armenia and Azerbaijan. According to a 1932 Soviet estimate, 85% of the area was rural, while only 15% was urban. This urban percentage increased to 18% by 1939 and 27% by 1959. As of 2011, 127,200 people of Nakhavan's total population of 435,400 live in urban areas, making the urban percentage 29.2% in 2014. Nakhavan enjoys a high Human Development Index, its socio-economic prowess far exceeds that of the neighboring countries, as well as Azerbaijan itself. According to the report of Nakhavan AR Committee of Statistics on June 30, 2014 for the end of 2013, some socio-economical data, including the following, are unveiled. Making use of the Human Development Index calculation method according to the new UNHD 2014 method, the above values change into these. Further, the value of the HDI becomes 2. Were it a country, Nakhavan would be ranked between Malaysia and Mauritius for its HDI. Also, 
compare it to Iran with HDI 0.749, Turkey with 0.759, or Azerbaijan with 0.747. Nakhavan is a semi-desert region that is separated from the main portion of Azerbaijan by Armenia. The Zanjir Mountains make up its border with Armenia while the Aras River defines its border with Iran. The Aras Reservoir located on that river supplies water for agricultural needs and the hydroelectric dam generates power for both Azerbaijan and Iran. Nakhavan is extremely arid and mountainous. Its highest peak is Mount Kapajuk 3904 m and its most distinctive is Island Dog 2415 m, which is visible from Nakhavan city. According to legend, the cleft in its summit was formed by the keel of Noah's Ark as the floodwaters abetted. Kazangda 3829 m is another major peak. Nakhavan's major industries include the mining of minerals such as salt, molybdenum, and lead. Dryland farming, developed during the Soviet years, has allowed the region to expand into the growing of wheat, barley, cotton, tobacco, orchard fruits, mulberries, and grapes for producing wine. Other industries include cotton ginning slash cleaning, silk spinning, fruit canning, meat packing, and, in the drier regions, sheep farming. Processing of minerals, salt, radio engineering, farm ginning, preserving, silk products, meat and dairy, bottling of mineral waters, clothing, furniture are the principal branches of Nakhavan's industry. The economy suffered a severe blow in 1988 with the loss of access to both raw materials and markets, due to the Nagorno-Karabakh war. Although new markets are emerging in Iran and Turkey, this isolation still persists to this day, impairing development. The economy of Nakhavan is based on agriculture, mining, and food processing. However 75% of the republic's budget is supplied by the central government in Baku. Aid is also provided by Turkey and several NGOs. The republic is rich in minerals. Nakhavan possesses deposits of marble, lime, and gypsum. The deposits of the rock salt are exhausted in Naram, Nakhavan, and Sistan. The important molybdenum mines are currently closed as a consequence of the exclave's isolation. There are a lot of mineral springs such as Badam Li, Sarab, Nagajir, Kiziljir where water contains arsenic. About 90% of the agricultural land is now in private hands. However agriculture has become a poorly capitalized, backyard activity. Production has dropped sharply and large-scale commercial agriculture has declined. Over two-thirds of the land are rocky slopes and deserts, therefore the area of arable lands is quite limited. The main crops, cotton and tobacco, are cultivated in the Priras Plain, near Sharur and Nakhavan City. Three-quarters of the grain production especially winter wheat is concentrated on the irrigated lands of the Sharur Plain and in the basin of the Nakhavan River. Vine growing in Nakhavan has an ancient tradition, in the Aras Valley and foothills. Very hot summers and long warm autumns make it possible to grow such highly saccharine grapes as Bayan Shiraz, Tabrizi, Shirazi. Wines such as Nakhavan Shabaz, Abrakunas, Aznaburk are of reasonable quality and very popular. Fruit production is quite important, mainly of quince, pear, peach, apricot, fig, almonds, and pomegranate. Cattle ranching is another traditional branch of Nakhavan farming. Due to the dry climate, pastures in Nakhavan are unproductive. Therefore sheep breeding prevails over other livestock production. 
Winter pastures stretch on the Priras Plain, on the foothills and mountainsides to the altitude of 1,200 m. But the summer pastures go up on the high mountain area to an altitude of 2,300-3,200 m. The most widespread sheep variety is Balbus. These sheep are distinguished by their productivity and snow-white silky wool which is widely used in the manufacture of carpets. Horned and small cattle are bred everywhere, especially in environs of Sharur and Nakkavan. Buffaloes are also bred here. Although intentions to facilitate tourism have been declared by the government, it is still at best incipient. Until 1997 tourists needed special permission to visit, which has now been abolished, making travel easier. Facilities are very basic and heating fuel is hard to find in the winter, but the arid mountains bordering Armenia and Iran are magnificent. In terms of services, Nakhchivan offers very basic facilities and lacks heating fuel during the winter. In 2007 the pole Shah Takti Bridge was completed, allowing residents of the Republic to access Azerbaijan proper without having to cross Armenian territory. Numerous sources have reported that Azerbaijan has been destroying historic Armenian monuments in Nakhchivan as part of a premeditated policy of erasing traces of Armenian culture on Azerbaijani territory. However Azerbaijan have rejected the accuracy of these reports. The number of named Armenian churches known to have existed in the Nakhchivan region is over 280. In as early as 1648 French traveller Alexander de Rhodes reported seeing more than 10,000 Armenian tombstones made of marble and julfa. The number of ecclesiastical monuments still standing in Nakhchivan in the 1980s is estimated to be between 59 and 100. The author and journalist Sylvain Besson believes them to have all been subsequently destroyed as part of a campaign by the government of Azerbaijan to erase all traces of Armenian culture on its soil. When the 14th century church of St. Stefanos at Abrakunis was visited in 2005, it was found to have been recently destroyed, with its site reduced to a few bricks sticking out of loose, bare earth. A similar complete destruction had happened to the 16th century St. Hakoharapat Church in Shurut. The Armenian churches in Norishen, Kurne, and Ga that were standing in the 1980s had also vanished. The most publicized case of mass destruction concerns gravestones at a medieval cemetery in Julfa, with photographic, video and satellite evidence supporting the charges. In April 2006 British The Times wrote about the destruction of the cemetery in the following way. A medieval cemetery regarded as one of the wonders of the Caucasus has been erased from the earth in an act of cultural vandalism likened to the tailbone blowing up the Bamiyan Buddhas in Afghanistan in 2001. The Jugga Cemetery was a unique collection of several thousand carved stone crosses on Azerbaijan's southern border with Iran. But after 18 years of conflict between Azerbaijan and its western neighbor, Armenia, it has been confirmed that the cemetery has vanished. The Armenians have long been sounding the alarm that the Azerbaijanis intend to eliminate all evidence of Armenian presence in Nakhchivan and to this end have been carrying out massive and irreversible destruction of Armenian cultural traces. The irony is that this destruction has taken place not during a time of war but at a time of peace. Armenian Foreign Minister Vardan Oskanian told The Times. Azerbaijan has consistently denied these accusations. For example, according to the Azerbaijani ambassador to the US, Hafiz Pashayev, the videos and photographs show some unknown people destroying mid-sized stones, and it is not clear of what nationality those people are 
and the reports are Armenian propaganda designed to divert attention from what he claimed was a state policy to destroy the historical and cultural monuments in the occupied Azeri territories. A number of international organizations have confirmed the complete destruction of the cemetery. The Institute for War and Peace reporting reported on April 19, 2006 that there is nothing left of the celebrated stone crosses of Jugga. According to the International Council on Monuments and Sites, the Azerbaijan government removed 800 cockcars in 1998. Though the destruction was halted following protests from UNESCO, it resumed four years later. By January 2003 the 1,500-year-old cemetery had completely been flattened according to ICOMOS. On December 8, 2010, the American Association for the Advancement of Science released a report entitled Satellite Images Show Disappearance of Armenian Artifacts in Azerbaijan. The report contained the analysis of high-resolution satellite images of the Julfa Cemetery, which verified the destruction of the Kachkars. The European Parliament has formally called on Azerbaijan to stop the demolition as a breach of the UNESCO World Heritage Convention. According to its resolution regarding cultural monuments in the South Caucasus, the European Parliament condemns strongly the destruction of the Julfa Cemetery as well as the destruction of all sites of historical importance that has taken place on Armenian or Azerbaijani territory, and condemns any such action that seeks to destroy cultural heritage. In 2006, Azerbaijan barred a parliamentary assembly of the Council of Europe mission from inspecting and examining the ancient burial site stating that it would only accept a delegation if it also visited Armenian-controlled territory. We think that if a comprehensive approach is taken to the problems that have been raised, said Azerbaijani Foreign Ministry spokesman Tahir Tejizade, it will be possible to study Christian monuments on the territory of Azerbaijan, including in the Nakhchivan Autonomous Republic. A renewed attempt was planned by PACE inspectors for August 29, September 6, 2007, led by British MP Edward O'Hara. As well as Nakhchivan, the delegation would visit Baku, Yerevan, Tbilisi, and Nagorno-Karabakh. The inspectors planned to visit Nagorno-Karabakh via Armenia, however, on August 28. The head of the Azerbaijani delegation to PACE released a demand that the inspectors must enter Nagorno-Karabakh via Azerbaijan. On August 29, PACE Secretary General Mateo Sorinas announced that the visit had to be cancelled because of the difficulty in accessing Nagorno-Karabakh using the route required by Azerbaijan. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Armenia issued a statement saying that Azerbaijan had stopped the visit due solely to their intent to veil the demolition of Armenian monuments in Nakhijevan. In the late 1990s the Supreme Assembly issued a non-binding declaration recognizing the sovereignty of the self-proclaimed Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus and calling upon Azerbaijan to do so. While sympathetic to the TRNC, Azerbaijan has not followed suit because doing so could prompt the Republic of Cyprus to recognize the self-proclaimed Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. Close relations between Nakhchivan and Turkey probably initiated this recognition. Nakhchivan is one of the cultural centers of Azerbaijan. In 1923, a musical subgroup was organized at the State Drama Theater. The Eros Song and Dance Ensemble is another famous group. Dramatic performances staged by an amateur dance troupe were held in Nakhchivan in the late 19th century. Theatrical art also greatly contributed to Nakhchivan's culture. The creative work of Jalil Mamajaluzadeh, Huzin Javid, M.S. Gilabekov, 
and Husein Arablinsky are just a few of the names that have enriched Nakhkavan's cultural heritage. The region has also produced noteworthy Armenian artists too such as Soviet actress Hesmak Agapyan. Nakhkavan has also at times been mentioned in works of literature. Nizami, the Persian poet, once wrote. The very early Karaeraxis culture flourished in Nakhkavan before spreading to many other areas, as far as Israel. This region reveals the genesis and chronology of this Chalcolithic and early Bronze Age culture. KLTP is an important early Chalcolithic site in Nakhkavan. Another such site is Maktakul Teep. Recent excavations at Ovkular Tepasi allow the dating of the initial stage of formation of Karaeraxis culture to 4200 BC. The Naxivan Archaeological Project is the first ever joint American Azerbaijani program of surveys and excavations, that was active since 2006. In 2010 to 11, they have excavated the large Iron Age fortress of Olankala. In Nakhkavan, there are also numerous archaeological monuments of the early Iron Age, and they shed a lot of light on the cultural, archaeological, and agricultural developments of that era. There are important sites such as Ilakligaya, Irinkoi, and the Sanctuary of Italy Piri in Kong Arli region. The Mamin Katun Mausoleum in Nakhkavan City Brickwork and faience pattern on the Mamin Katun Mausoleum Another view of the mausoleum Medieval period ram-shaped grave monuments collected near the Mamin Katun Mausoleum A ram-shaped grave monument embedded in concrete The Batabat region of Shukbuz General view of Ordubad with a range of high mountains in neighboring Iran in the distance. Houses of Ordubad photographed near the east bank of Ordubad Che. The famous narrow streets of Ordubad. A mosque in a quarter of Ordubad. The Aras River on the Iranian border near Julfa. The mountainous terrain of Nakhkavan. The Armenian Kekar Cemetery at Julfa. The Yusuf Ibn Qusir Mausoleum in Nakhkavan City. Coordinates, 39 degrees 20 minutes north 45 degrees 30 minutes east slash 39.333 degrees north 45.500 degrees east slash 39.333, 45.500.